Before we talk more about the negative health effects associated with uranium exposure, let's talk about why it's so valuable. <laughs> yeah, and today it's uranium. The Senate passed this bill to ban uh, enriched uranium imports from Russia, and President Biden is expected to sign it into law soon. It also unlocks $2.7 billion in funding. First, it's the raw material primarily used as fuel for nuclear reactors that then produce electricity for the masses. And secondly, when uranium is enriched, it's used for defense weapons, like nuclear bombs and also bulletproof tank armor and other armor-piercing projectiles. But most importantly, 41% of all the world's uranium is manufactured in the great nation of Kazakhstan, a former Soviet Union territory economically aligned with our sworn enemy, Mother Russia. So needless to say, the moment uranium was discovered beneath Havasupai land, the race began. The company running the pinion mine is called Energy Fuels Incorporated. My name is Mark Chalmers and I'm president and CEO of Energy Fuels. Uh, we had a, a, a smashing 2020 23 uh, with a hundred million net income. So we're really excited about that. And, and we continue building into 2024. Energy Fuels Incorporated has an active business contract in place with the same organization that approved its permit, the U.S. government. In fact, they've promised to deliver our government three million pounds of domestically mined uranium by 2030 in order to establish something called the U.S. Strategic Uranium Reserve, which will serve as a nuclear energy backup in the event of a quote unquote significant market disruption and likely will be used to barter more equitable defense contracts with companies like Raytheon and Lockheed Martin, who will be able to circumnavigate corporate tax codes by buying uranium directly from the federal government. At Lockheed Martin, we're on a mission. Your mission. A lot of this mining that's happening is not going to be here in the United States. It's going to be taken across the ocean, become bombs. Right now, it is August 5th. In Japan, it's August 6th. Today is the day we bombed Japan. August 6th is the day the United States bombed Hiroshima. August 9th, we bombed Nagasaki. And that uranium came from indigenous lands in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. We call it nuclear colonialism. Despite these sorts of bold declarations made by protesters, the issue of nuclear energy is actually a very tricky one. Because in terms of greenhouse gases and carbon emissions, nuclear is actually the safest and least damaging energy source for the environment, aside from solar. In fact, it's 88 times safer than coal, 65 times safer than oil, and twice as safe as wind. So the way progressive politicians see it, it appears that investing in nuclear energy is a way to combat climate change and save the ozone layer and stuff like that. And that means building a new generation of safe, clean nuclear power plants in this country. But for those concerned about potentially being affected by radioactive waste, it appears that the special interest groups representing the manufacturers of defense weapons have colluded to violate federal law to extract mass quantities of domestic uranium in the interests of the war machine, a term that I was introduced to recently at an event called the Poor People's Army March in Chicago, when I interviewed the leading presidential candidate for the Green Party, Jill Stein. For those who don't know, what is the war machine? Very simply put, we are now spending about half of our congressional budget, a trillion dollars a year, on endless wars and 800 military bases around the world. We are spending more than the next 10 nations combined, the next 10 biggest spenders. We're spending more, mostly on weapons. So it's about half of this humongous budget that's actually going to the war profiteers, the war contractors. They're making huge profits on this. It is an industry which has bought its way into Congress, and it provides a lot of campaign contributions. It, it provides lobbyists who are defining policy, and it creates these projects that provide jobs in a whole lot of different districts, and that's also how they buy the support of our politicians, such as they are. APAC is also part of this. So, on Hiroshima Day, here we are having a rally. There was close to 200 people out here on the highway to demand that the governor of Arizona shut down Canyon Uranium Mine. 